Welcome to the first video in a very exciting series of videos on... Functions. Functions. Now, you guys have already seen a function, and maybe you don't know it. May Hopefully we explained that it was a function, but if we didn't, you're looking at one right there. Bam. And this is the basic way of expressing a function. Mm -hmm. And as we, we uh, expressed in the way beginning, this function is returning an integer, and it's returning an integer number of zero. The reason we know it's returning an integer is because we do int main. We could just as easily change this to float main or void main. Let me explain real quick. A void function, let me put this here. A void function, what does a void function do? It does not return a value. Uh huh. This is the only one that doesn't return a value. Right. So a void function, you don't have to have a return statement. If we take a look at this line right here, system pause, this is a perfect example of a function. Once we get to this point of the code, we leave the main function and we go somewhere else and we execute the system function. Right. The system function is sent a parameter called pause. Mm -hmm. Now, what the system function is, is it goes out to the command terminal and whatever is inside these parentheses, it'll run, it'll run that in command terminal. So in this case, we're running the pause command, which we demonstrated before. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to make our own function right now, and uh, we're going to show you just a very simple function. Right. So, and, go ahead. so we'll start out with a void function. Okay, void function. And there's basically two ways you can design your program with functions. You can have a function prototype, or you can actually write the function before the main function. Right. And I know that sounds complicated. But your main function wants to know what these functions are before it runs. Right. Otherwise, it won't run. And the two ways you can do that is you can either write all of your functions before the main function, or you can write all your functions below the main function, but tell your main function there is this coming up and it has this data. Right. So, so let's, let's do it that way. All right. So we're going to do a function prototype. Okay. So the function prototype is written this way. We're going to write the kind of function it is. In this case, void. So it's a void function. And we'll call it... Let me just make it a space. And now the name of the function. Text out? Text out. All right. And we're also going to have a function here, mm -hmm. that, which is open close parentheses. And that's it. We are now telling the main, the main function, expect later on to be told to go out to text out. Right. So... Yes. Okay, so great. So now, what we're going to do, I'm going to erase this since really no point of having that. What are we doing, Bri? We're separating the two functions, so it's easy to read. Yep. This is a giant block comment. It's very, very typically used when, separate, when writing functions. It's just a line of asterisks that will separate the two functions. We have the main function, and now we're going to write the text out function. So... Brian, tell us how we, how we do that. All right, so we'll also do void text out uh, with an X post in S. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> All right, and now like the int main function, we'll block it off in curly braces. Ah. So we have a function now. Yeah. So now so, what should we do in this function? Why don't we call the function and see what happens? Okay. Okay, so right in here, how do we call the function? We'll just say text out, parenthesis, parenthesis, semicolon. So now we're calling, now we're telling the main function to go here. And once it goes here, it's almost the equivalent of having this code that's inside this block put right here. Right. So let's do uh, F9. We'll call it functions1. One. Functions1. One. And it worked. It worked perfectly, even though we have no proof. <laughs> right. It, <laughs> we promise you it did. Now, how do we prove that it went to that block of code? Let's have it do something. Okay, good idea. So let's see out. Hello. See out. Hello. I am a function. So what's going to happen now is the main function is going to get to here. That when it gets to here, it's going to come here and execute what's inside here. Right. So let's do an F9. <coughs> and my goodness. It works. Hello, I am a function. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, so now, like the convenience of functions is, is that you don't have to redo the whole block of code a million times. 
So right before the text out function is called, let me get rid of my highlighters here. All right. Let's just do a for int i equals zero. It's less than five. Increment by one. I is less than five. I plus plus. All right. So now we're going to call this function five times. Right. So it's the, equi uh, the equivalent of writing C out, hello, I am a function, five times in a row. Right. So we'll do F9. Da -da 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 -da. So we just called the function five times. Nice. Excellent. See, this is the basic concept of what a function is. Very useful. And C++ is function-based. And it's always good to have your program broken up into as many simple functions as possible. Right. You want to eliminate the amount of redundant code in your program as much as possible. Yes. And you want, and I know this sounds kind of weird, but you want your main function to be the smallest function in your program. Right. You want the, the majority of your code to be sent out for other functions to do. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like having, instead of having one guy do all the work, you have a whole group of guys right. that go out and do the work for you and then give it to the main function. Or the main structure is the main function is kind of like the uh, conductor. The conductor, that's the word. <laughs> think of it. We're going to do this exact same thing, but we're going to return a value mm -hmm. instead of printing out a value. Right. Now we mentioned before this doesn't have to be void. This can be int, so just like this is. Right. But in this case, we want to make this a string. So this is going to be a string. So. When you say string and then a function, it is expected to return a string value. Right. So after this function runs at this point, it's going to equal a string. Right. So now, good practice, include our string header, and let's get to work. Okay, so now in the text out function, instead of saying C out, let's just say return instead of C out. Okay, get rid of this and type return. Right. So now, every time we execute this function, it's going to return that value. Mm -hmm. So now in our for loop, let's do C out, text out. Aha, so now we, ha we have to change this. Because otherwise, it's just going to equal it. Right. So just out of curiosity, we'll push F9. Again, it didn't do anything. Right. That's just because it runs the function, it does everything it has to do, and it comes back with a value, but it doesn't do anything with that, that It doesn't know where to put it. So you can either do, you know, if you were to send it away to do, a, like, to do arithmetic and it returns a value, you can add to it, subtract to it. Right. So you could have, like, um, string A equals text out. You know, you could then store that as a variable. So in this case, we'll just print it to the screen. Okay. So this is going to see out the string value of this function. And so it does. It, yep. And it returned the value of the string itself and print it to the screen. Okay, that is a simple basic introduction to functions. Play with this a little bit, and we will come back later on and elaborate on this. Yeah.